Week two of the fantasy baseball season is officially here. Matt and I have all the must-add players for this week ready for you. So lock on in and enjoy this episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Sports Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino, here as always with my brother and my co-host, Matthew Ane. Yeah, it was good. You can find us on all social media platforms and podcasting apps. Just search for Locked On Fantasy Baseball and we'll be there. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, uh, we'd appreciate if you could do that for us. It goes a long way to help the outreach of the podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, all you got to do is hit that little bell. It subscribes you to the channel and gives you a notification every time we drop a new episode. Also, be sure to like and comment because we love to talk fantasy baseball with you. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MLB60 and use the code MLB60 for 60% off plus free shipping. So on today's episode, Matt and I are providing you with all the must-add players as we head into week two. And we got a bunch of good names for you guys. We're going to start off with some bats, then get into some pitchers. So make sure you lock on for the whole episode. Uh, Matt, who do we got up first today, brother? Ah, we got a good, good special name for everybody today. And that's Mr. Oscar Colas of the Chicago White Sox. Um, I mean, my guy has just been pretty good since being able to get his first shot in the bigs. Uh, with Eloy going down, he looked like he was going to make the team regardless. But right now, he's looking like he's he's uh, here to stay, even if even when Eloy comes back. Right now, through um, 33 at bats, he has five runs, a double, a home run, four ribs, a walk to eight Ks, which I'm not too crazy about. But hey, it's that new MLB with two stolen bases and batting 303. My guy is also only 26% rostered, which is really nice. So, I mean, Colas has a lot of upside just in general because, I mean, he is a top-notch prospect. I really wouldn't call him too much of a prospect since he really never – he really only played one year in the minors because he played overseas a lot. Um, but what he did in the minors was pretty good. Um, and 481 at-bats, he had 81 runs, 24 doubles, 4 triples, 23 bombs, 79 ribbies, 3 stolen bases – uh, 38 walks to, you know, bajillion strikeouts at 120, but still bad at 314. So, like I said, he's that new type of, you know, MLB hitter who's going to hit, you know, 314, but strike out a bajillion times. He's probably not going to be great for your points leagues, but definitely for your roto and head-to-head leagues, definitely worth it, especially at 26% owned. You know, if, if he starts lighting up and starts performing how he did in the minors, you're going to have a great pickup early in the season. So, Definitely pick up Oscar Colas, one of the must-ads this year. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Oscar Colas guy, too, and he's uh played in every single game this season. He hasn't started all of them, but he's played in every single game this season. So, you know, that's even good news when uh, Eloy hopefully comes back later this week that Colas is going to be in the lineup. And he's been hitting, you know, looks like he's been hitting towards the lower end of that lineup. But you know what? If he keeps hitting like this, there's every reason to move Colas up. He's actually showing off a bit more speed than he did in the minors. As, uh, you know, Matt read you off, he only had three steals in 117 uh, games last year in the minors for Colas. And and this year through 10 games, he's already got, you know, uh, two steals and he hasn't been caught. So, you know, Cola showing that he's got a little bit of speed plus the power, you know, as Matt said, 24 doubles, 23 bombs last year. So that's a nice combo to have in your lineup and get him while he's still under owned. You know, uh, he's he's not going to stay this way for, you know, um, for much longer if he keeps performing like this. We told you guys about Cola in the offseason when we talked positional rankings and when we talked about prospects. He was a name that we brought up multiple times. If you drafted Cola, then you're. Definitely reaping in the rewards right now, especially in those uh, deeper leagues where he's actually really, really helping out because you got a deal on him. 
on draft day. Next up, we got uh, you know, another another solid guy for you here. A little bit if you need uh, some help with the speed departments. So that's Miles Straw. Now, if you've been playing fantasy baseball or you've just been watching baseball in general for the past few years, you, you might have heard Miles Straw's name because he is a bit of a speedster. Uh, last year, Miles Straw, 152 games, he had 21 steals. Not really too much else. He had 72 runs, and uh, you know he's useful in that department as well. Not really so much of a batting average guy as Miles Straw is a career 249 hitter. But if you need steals right now, go out there and grab you Miles Straw. He's got six steals on the season. He's got seven runs. You know, as I said, he's not really going to help you in too much of those other categories. He hasn't been caught stealing yet, so that shows you that his uh, prowess on the base paths is very, very good. Uh, somebody that, like, once again, you know, I uh, hate to keep reiterating, but if you need those deals, go out and get them. He is 62% owned on Yahoo, might be a little bit less on other, you know, uh, platforms. So just go out there and check your waiver wire. I think Miles Straw is definitely worth the ad. And real quick, where he's been hitting at ninth in that lineup, so that's why he's going to have a lot of runs. They're going to let him steal, you know, just to try and, uh, you know, drive him in a little bit more. So if you need runs, steals, Miles Straw is your guy. Yeah, I mean – he is that cheap steals guy that, you know, really good for the Roto Leagues where you can scoop him up and just rack him on in, especially on days off. But, I mean, that's all you really have to talk about, Miles Strauss. Let's uh, let's move on to Isaac Paredes. Isak. Isak. Oh, Isak. I'm going to go with Isaac. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's better. Uh, <laughs> it's better. I love that. <laughs> so, um, Isak is um, 37% owned. Uh, which is which is great. Still time to add him. He is not really known for his batting average or anything of this sort. But right now he's hot, and you know he's one of these players that we're just going to say, "Hey, ride the wave." Um, you know, so far this season, my guy has twenty eight at bats, six runs, two bombs, nine ribbies. You know, two walks to six strikeouts. You know, typical, and you know, two eighty six. It's great numbers right now. I mean, hey, while the while the iron's hot, keep him going. And then when he starts dying off a little bit, you know, that's when you dump him. Because, I mean, his past isn't great in the batting average category. Um, you know, 2022, 205, 2021, 208. And in 2020, 220. So, you know, it's funny how that last one worked out. But, you know, he's just he, – he is who he is. And you know what? He'll get things done for you when you need to fill somebody in. Not gonna get your ribbies. Not get you a couple. Get you a decent amount of home runs while he's up on your team. But he's also gonna mutilate your batting average. So you know, his sock should be good for you in the short term. Yeah, the thing with Paredes is, as Matt said, it's kind of a juice the orange situation because he was hot in stretches last year for you know Tampa. Last year in June, he had eight bombs, fourteen RBIs. He had two seventy one. And then, you know, he had another decent month in August where he had four bombs, 11 RBIs, uh, 12 runs, and he hit 235. So, you know, as my brother Matt said, going to probably hurt you in the batting average department, but he does have pop and that, as we all know, Tampa Bay is the best team in baseball right now. So you definitely, you know, can juice the orange with him. He's hit third a bunch of times recently in uh, that Tampa Bay lineup. He's hit fifth. So, you know, they like to move him around. He's a Swiss Army knife on Yahoo. He's eligible at first, second, and third. Once again, that's uh, Isak Paredes here. And, you know, just like I said, he's good in stretches. So know, you know, when to hold him, know when to fold him, know when to run, uh, you know, as the song goes. So uh, that's, uh, you know, pretty much all we got on uh, Paredes here for you. But real quick, guys, before we move on, uh, our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners. With officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams, it is unlike other fantasy baseball platforms. So experience collecting, buying, selling, and competing with players, player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own the cards, and there's no cost to play at all. It is free to download. So Rare recently partnered with MLB All-Stars Juan Soto and Julio Rodriguez to serve as their brand ambassadors. And guys, you, you don't really get much better than uh, Soto and uh, Mr. J-Rod there. So they definitely partnered up with some uh, some good ones. Both are featured in So Rare's current brand campaign and will engage with the So Rare community throughout the season at MLB events. Wow, it's, that's awesome. I got to get myself entered into that. Head to SoRare.com slash locked on. That's spelled S O R A R E dot com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash locked on to start playing today. 
So let's move on to uh, our last bat. Oh, no, not, our, not even our last bat. We got a lot of names for you guys today. So, you know, once again, stay locked on over here. But let's talk about Trevor Larnich. Now, Trevor Larnich was somebody who was not one of the highest-end prospects, but he was, you know, his name was thrown around a little bit in the prospect community. And the cool thing is he's batting leadoff here for, you know, uh, recently for uh, Minnesota. But before that, he was hitting third, he was hitting fourth. So Minnesota's keeping him near the top end of the lineup. you love to see that with Mr. Larnage. On the season so far, he's 11 for 34, five runs, one home run, seven RBIs, hitting 324. And he's only 20% owned. And he is eligible at, okay, he's eligible as at outfield. And outfield, you know, is uh, one of the harder positions to fill, especially if you're playing in those deeper leagues. Uh, I do like Trevor Larnich. You know, last year he um, he had a, a decent showing, you know, as, a, as, as um, you know, well, technically his second year in the minors, but in the majors, but he really didn't play a lot in 2021 either. So he didn't really get like a fair shake, you know, hopefully he gets it this year. Uh, he was um he had some pretty solid years in the minors. Uh, in 2019, you know he hit 309, uh, 127 games, 59 runs, 30 doubles, 13 bombs, 66 RBIs with four steals. So he's got a little bit of pop, tiny bit of speed for Larnage. Might be a little bit of a juice to orange situation here with uh with him though. But you know what? That's what we're here to tell you guys. One thing in fantasy baseball that you got to take into account, uh, especially for playing in daily leagues, is the juice to orange uh you know technique, which is get the guys while they're hot. Play them, and you know, as long as they're hot, and then once they're cold, you you cut them or you trade them while they're hot, and get something that you get a guy that you know is going to be useful later down the stretch that might be underperforming. But that's the take on uh, Trevor Larnage for me. Once again, twenty percent owned outfielder hitting near the top of that lineup for Minnesota right now. Yep, Larnage is good. Check him out. Um, you know, not my favorite name out of all these guys, but you know, definitely yeah, worth an ad. Same. So uh, let's move on here. Tommy did a great job there. Let's talk about Mister Victor Robles. Sure. Uh, he's about 3% known and you guys are probably all rolling your eyes. Like, why are we even talking about him? But so far he's <laughs> off to, probably, yeah. I mean, so far he's off to a good start and this is what, this is all that matters, right? Is you want somebody that's doing something now, especially if you're going through injuries and things of that sort, right? So with 31 at bats, he has five runs, two doubles, no home runs or triples yet, but that'll come. Three ribs, five walks to three strikeouts, which is a nice number to see. A, a stolen base and batting 387. At 3% on, you can't really hate what's going on and what he's doing, especially with all these injuries popping up. I mean, you know, with O'Neill Cruz going down, I mean, we gave you, I think we gave you one shortstop, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if not, DM us and we'll take care of that. Um, strong, strong might have a yeah. little bit of that. Um, but you know, other guys are going down. It's just been really putrid with just, I mean, not putrid, really decimating with all these injuries from like Eloy to, you know, O'Neill and all these other pitchers. So Robles can fill in and do at least something for you and produce now and just ride that wave until something else, somebody else pops up or comes back healthy and get rid of him or keep him until he dies out. I mean, what's the worst that happens? Robles pops this year for a quick little, quick little stint and you collect, the, you read the rewards. You know, why not? Victor Robles could be that little boost that you need to your lineup. Yeah, um, it's worth the chance right now with Robles. I mean, uh, he's got major, major prospect fatigue on him, though, because he's been around since uh, he's 17 years old in 2014. Guys might not even realize that Victor Robles is still only 26 because he's been around forever. And, you know, through his time in the minors, he was a speed demon on the base paths. You know, he had that uh, great 2016 in the minors where he had 280, stole 37 bases. Uh, and he had 75 runs the following year in 2017 he stole 27 bases in 2019 he stole 28 bases so he's really not going to help you in too many categories but if you do need steals uh in the outfield and let's say miles straw is gone and he, i'll double check myself miles straw doesn't have shortstop eligibility i'll give you a couple quick hits at shortstop uh, after i wrap up things here on robles now I think, you know, as Matt said, it may be a deeper league play. He is only 3% owned on Yahoo. So if you need the speed, you're in like, you know, that NL only league or, you know, five outfielder league, and it's tough to find anything. Uh, Victor Robles is worth the shot. Maybe he's doing that late career turnaround. Maybe he's figured something out. I'm not 100% sure with Robles. I kind of wrote him off myself over the past few years of him not really doing much. But, you know, you could do worse than uh, Robles right now. 
So I do have a couple of shortstop quick hits. Let's give them to you guys in case if you're trying to play O'Neill Cruz, that's what we're here for. Uh, if you guys, you know, haven't paid attention, you know, I mean, he's not doing great, but th- I know there's something in the tank. Luis Rangifo is one of, you know, somebody that I really like. He's second, short, and third base eligible. Uh, he's from the Angels, if you don't know about him. He's been hitting towards the end of that Angels lineup, and once again, he hasn't been off to the hot, hottest start, but, you know, he's got a little bit of power, a little bit of speed. Uh, that's Luis Rangifo, and he is 24% owned on Yahoo. We talked about Bryce Terang last week from uh, Milwaukee, you know, young rookie. He's pretty solid, second and short eligibility. Not playing every single day for the Brewers, but, you know, he's hitting 300. He's got five RBIs, two steals. He's 32% owned on Yahoo. And let me see if I could throw one more in there for you. Here, I got a good one, guys. If you listen to that crossover episode we did with Locked On Padres, Hassan Kim is somebody that I talked about as a deep sleeper. He's eligible at second, third, and shortstop. And Hassan Kim, for those Padres, he's been doing pretty good with four runs, two homers, four RBIs, hitting 281. And Hassan Kim's only 23% owned on Yahoo right now. He's been hitting, you know, near the bottom of that Padres lineup, but they're a good team. You know, Tatis is coming back soon. And, you know, Hassan Kim is definitely a name to look at as a shortstop goes. Matt, I don't know if there's anybody else one you more. want to throw real quick. Go, go for it, brother. Go for um, it. Geraldo Perdomo. There you okay. go, Geraldo Perdomo. You got it. Oh, good. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just illiterate. Um, <laughs> he's about 11% owned, which is solid. And on the season, he's got seven runs, a bomb, eight ribs, a stolen base, and batting 438. You know, Geraldo is just, just mad. We'll see what he can do. I mean, last year just wasn't great. But, hey, ride the wave. See what happens. And it, worst, worst that happens, we're just streaming shortstop all year. It's probably easier than streaming uh, relief pitchers. So we'll get you through this. Trust me. <laughs> Real quick, I will say this too. This is probably your last chance to throw out a buy low offer on Tatis before he comes back. And I would make that play right now. He's actually doing pretty solid in the minors. Uh, I don't have those stats right in front of me, but I know I've looked at it a few times. Those numbers look pretty, pretty good. Oh, also, so, Tim Anderson went down today. Uh, there you go. So, you know, you're definitely going to need those shortstops replacements. I'm glad we were able to hit you with a few of them. And once again, I would throw out that buy low offer on Tatis before he comes back on April 20th to see if you could uh, snag him on the low. You know, just throw out the, oh, you know, you don't know how he's going to do, ba ba ba. But when Tatis is out there, he's capable of being the best player in all of baseball. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Tommy, want to kick it off with the first pitcher? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's talk about Anthony Desclefani. Now, Desclefani has always had that upside to him. He's had some very, very fantasy-relevant seasons. He's dealt with some injuries in the past, like, you know, three, four years that have, you know, not kept him on the field as much. But you know what? He goes over to the San Francisco Giants. Second year there, he's getting a little bit more comfortable. He's getting a little bit in his older age. And Matt and I have spoke about this plenty on the podcast. You know, pitching is an art form. When you're not going out there and throwing 100 miles an hour, you know, it, it becomes an art form, right? And it looks like Desclafani is starting to, you know, master that art a little bit. Uh, so far in two starts this season, Desclafani has an 0.73 ERA, 12 innings pitched, 11 strikeouts, no walks, and a 0.48 whip. Now, the thing is, is do I think he keeps that up all season? Absolutely not. But can he give you a mid-3 ZRA, a decent whip, um, you know, maybe win a few games with that San Fran team? Yeah, it's definitely possible. The best thing is that he gets the Detroit Tigers on April 15th, so you can take advantage of that start. He's only 49% owned on Yahoo, so he's out there in half of all the leagues on Yahoo. I've just always been a a Desclafani guy. You know, I've always given him the chance. Because even when he was with, um, you know, uh, Cincinnati, and let me correct myself on something. It's actually Anthony Desclafani's third year with the Giants, not his uh, second year. It's his third year. And in 2021, his first year with the Giants, actually, he had a great year, 317 ERA, 167 strikeouts, 152, uh, 167 innings, 152 strikeouts, and a 109 whip. So he actually likes pitching there in San Francisco. Get him, you know, he got out of Cincinnati, which is, you know, it was a tough place to pitch in. And uh, I definitely like Desclafani. I think that he continues more of that dominance, uh, you know, this year with uh, San Fran. And just to add to T. Flascani real quick, he did have an injury-prone season last year, started off the year hot, then got hurt again. So he hasn't really been able to get back onto it. So if he keeps this trend in the upwards direction, he could be a sneaky pickup this year. So, you know, definitely keep your eye on Anthony T. Flascani. All right. Here at Lockdown, we're super excited about our new sports betting partner, FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. 
and there's no better place to get in on MLB the, uh, than FanDuel, America's number one sports book in America. New, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can wager on everything from money line to strikeouts and home runs. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine those bets for a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss on your cha- out on your chance for your sp- no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. So go to phone, uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Get started today. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the Major League Baseball. That's weird wording there. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't just say MLB. But it's all good, ladies and gentlemen. I have a great, great arm that I mentioned last week that I think everybody really should be keeping an eye on and honestly should be picking up after his last start. And that's Mackenzie Gore. Mackenzie Gore is what was a prospect darling every year last year we really thought he was gonna come out do his thing on the padres then he got hurt and they came back and then he was dealing dealing with just bad control then got traded to the nationals and that's like a dark black hole of just emptiness of your soul so you know who wants to play good there so he ended off the season on a bad note but it looks like hey he came back out to play this year and said screw it i'm gonna make the best of this so so far this season he has 11 innings pitched he has 12 Ks. He's, you know, a 238 ERA and a 124 whip. And here's the real reason why we're talking about him. He had a great start against Atlanta, right? And I and it was it was actually really nice I'm pulling up the stat now. Um, yeah, he went five innings deep. He only let up one run. He had a 169 ERA. He had a 131 uh whip, and he had six Ks. That's solid as hell going up against Atlanta. Then he goes to Colorado and plays in Cor- Coors Park. If you don't know about Coors Park, it is a hard place to pitch. It's just atrocious. He comes out, he gets six innings, six Ks. He only gave up a home run and two and two uh, two runs in total at a two three two three eight ERA with a one two four WHIP. Um, Mackenzie Gore is playing really good. I think that he is definitely worth an add. At what did I say his percentage was? 30, 33%. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. Scoop him up, ride this wave, and if he could turn out to be somebody that's a long-term, I mean, hey, if anybody's going to do it out of all these names, it probably is Mackenzie Gore. I think he's either my 1 or 1A one B, B to add this week for me. Mackenzie Gore, definitely scoop him up. Yeah, I, I I like Mackenzie Gore as well as Matt as you know as you said my brother he was one of you know he he I don't think he was the number one overall prospect at any point but he might have been the number one pitching prospect at a certain point in time not a hundred percent sure you could fact check me on that but you know the numbers look pretty good so far this season the only thing I'd like to see is him get a little bit better with that control the six walks on the season is a little bit you know. A little bit concerning, but I think he's got the stuff to correct it. Hopefully, you know, there in Washington, some of those pitching coaches and guys are working with him to, you know, get everything together. Numbers look pretty good in the season as Matt read off. You know, he's got upside for, you know, over a K per nine because he's done it before in the the minors a few times. And uh, he's still young, 24 years old for Mackenzie Gore. I think, you know, if he really, uh, you know, gets it together, I'll give you an idea of what he's capable of. In 2019, Mackenzie Gore, uh, you know, in A ball and double A ball, he had 20 starts, nine wins, two losses, a 169 ERA, 101 innings, 135 Ks with a 083 whip. So, you know, he's definitely got the upside, he's got the potential. Uh, 33% owned on Yahoo, as we mentioned. So I think you ride the wave with um, Mackenzie Gore and just see how things go, you know, down the stretch here with him. But let's talk about our next guy. And it's funny because I think I picked the, the wrong one out of the two uh, Mets horses that decided to, you know, uh, come up and make a difference this year. And uh, it's Tyler McGill. I was a David Peterson guy, I'll be honest with you, but Peterson's been absolutely putrid. 
And, you know, Tyler McGill has come out there, and he's, like, absolutely excellent there for the Mets. So, so far in the season, McGill has pitched 11 innings, 10 Ks, 2 wins, 1.64 ERA, and a 1.18 whip. McGill is only 31% owned on Yahoo. We, we got a bunch of good pitchers for you guys this week. And you know what the funny thing is? is I know a lot of aces haven't been, you know, getting it done so far. So, you know, pick up some of these guys and just see where things go with him. You know, McGill didn't have a great overall season last year with the Mets, but he was good in stretches. So he showed off the stuff last year. He He's only 27 years old. I think there's a lot of upside for him. You know, he's always kind of been a strikeout guy, you know, well over a K per nine. The whip might get a little bit, you know, questionable as the season goes on. But I think he gets suppressed runs. I think that ERA could, you know, be like a mid threes, high threes ERA. He had, you know, he's always been pretty good in the minors except for, you know, 2022. But from 2018 to 2021, he was always a low three ERAs guy, as I mentioned, well over a strikeout per nine. And on that Mets team, you know, as long as he's pitching good, he's going to win games. So uh, Tyler McGill is somebody you should definitely give a shot. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I talked about him um, while you were out. He was ah, one, of my, one of my guys I was really saying, you know, scoop him up before things started popping off. So, there you know, you go. For, there you go, brother. for a second mention, you know, he's definitely somebody that you really need to scoop up because he's only going to grow from here. Definitely take a look at him. Let's talk about somebody else. Bryce Elder. Um, Bryce Elder, pitcher for the uh, Atlanta Braves, had a really great outing, his first, first outing out. Um, you know, he went six innings deep. Gave up two hits, no earned runs, which is great. Had six Ks, and he had a 0.83 whip. You know, you can't ask for more than that. Um, he did that against, just for reference here, against St. Louis Cardinals, which, yeah, which is, you know, really saying something. that Hey, you're going out there, you're going to pitch against a really tough team, and you're not going to give up a run. Way to go, um, Bryce Elder. He is going to, is looks like he's the one out of all the young guys that made the team this year that's probably going to keep his job. Kyle Wright comes back tomorrow, which is today for you guys. So, you know, probably Dodd is probably going to be sent down right after this because he had a horrendous outing. Killed me last week. Lost me a category. <laughs> you know, so, you know, bye-bye, Dodd. But Elder looks like he's here to stay for now, at least, and I really do like him. I like his upside, and, you know, we'll see what happens down the stretch. You know, there's still – I think there is one more spot left open even when Soroka returns. So Elder could be somebody that could be a longer-term play, and he does have good talent. So keep your eye on Elder, if not, add him already. Well, I'm, I'm going to start with this. I love Bryce Elder. I'm a huge Bryce Elder guy. I had him ranked super high coming into the season because I said, oh, he pitched pretty good last year when, you know, while he was up, you know, I mean, uh, last year, and you know, Bryce Elder uh, for the Braves, he had – Nine starts, 317 ERA, 54 innings, 47 Ks, and a 124 whip. So that's not a bad showing for a 23 year old. So I'm like, oh, he's probably going to get the spot. Then out of nowhere, they're talking Schuster, talking Dodd. And, you know, neither one of them really lived up to the hype. And, you know, I mean, Schuster, you know, I wasn't really a big on Schuster at all. I did think God had some upside, but, you know, he didn't really get it done. But let's even talk about what Bryce Elder's doing today as we're recording. He's got six innings, six innings thrown, seven Ks, no runs, a one whip against Cincinnati. You know, it's an easy team, but you know what? It's not easy to go out there and get it done as a starting pitcher right now, as we talked about. A lot of aces are out there struggling. Bryce Elder's 38% owned. Now, the thing is, I don't know, you know, Matt said there might be a spot, but don't forget we have Kyle Wright coming back. We have Max Freed, who actually looks like he still might be out a little bit longer. From what I saw, he's not even running yet. So, you know, he's got to run. He's got to get that arm stretched back out. So, you know, when Freed and Wright are back, there's not really a spot. But you know what? Bryce Elder might force the hand. Maybe they go six-man rotation. Maybe something gets figured out. Maybe Charlie Morton's old butt, you know, gets hurt. And, you know, he's out for a while. But, you know, Bryce Elder has a lot of upside. And if he, if he, if I knew he had the spot in the rotation secured for the rest of the season, I'd say he's the number one ad. So, you know, at 38% owned, uh, Bryce Elder definitely, definitely worth a shot. Um, I'm huge on him. I can't really, you know, uh, praise the kid anymore because, you know, uh, that that's uh, that's about it on Elder. Hey, so just let's wipe move your on. mouth, bro. Yeah, no, I love him. Love, love the kid. I'm so mad that I only, I only have one share of him. I wish I had a few more. But um, let's talk about our last guy here. And it's actually Chris Bubich of the you know Kansas City Royals. Boob. Now the thing with the the thing with uh Bubich is that uh <laughs> is he's he's always had some pretty good stuff. You know, he wasn't a highly touted prospect, but if you're in that type of community, you've heard his name thrown around a few times. Actually, there might be a little bit of fatigue on him at this point because he's had about you know 
two decent years. I like I'm talking about lengthwise in 2021. He had 130 innings. Uh, 2022, he had 129 innings and he never really panned out the way that people thought he was going to. But you know what? Let's talk about that great 2019 that Bubich had in the minors. Uh, 26 starts, two, uh, two, two, three ERA, 149 innings, 185 Ks with a 097 whip. So the potential is there for you know Bubich. He's shown us that he can you know uh, pitch pretty well. Uh, this year so far, 1.64 ERA across two starts, 11 innings, 13 strikeouts. This is what I love: one walk. So he's showing the great control. 090 ER, I mean whip, and. Uh, He's done it against, uh, you know, some decent opponents against Toronto. You know, he he went out there, was pretty good. But he had this dominant start against San Fran on April 9th. It was six innings, nine Ks, no earned runs, and a 0-3-3 whip for Bubich. He gets Atlanta next time out, so it's a little bit shaky. I would say throw him on the watch list for now. Throw Bubich on the watch list. If he pitches good against Atlanta, definitely a scoop. But I don't know right now if I'm risking that, you know, start against Atlanta for Bubich. think you just keep an eye on him. He's 10% owned on Yahoo. Yeah, no, I like I like the um, the possibilities that there is of Boobich, the boob himself. Um, we'll see if he actually turns out to be a boob or he turns out to be a stud over the next couple of weeks. But he's definitely a hot end that you want to keep in. I don't foresee him being too successful against Atlanta. But if he comes out and does what Mackenzie Gore did and he's able to suppress and only give up a run or two and goes out there and does a K per nine and keeps the whip down, you know, then we then this may be the start of a trend that we like because I mean, the boob is actually not that old. Um, he's what twenty five years old, so you know he's still got some time. And he, and this is the thing with pitchers, at least for me, is the older they get, the better they are. It's not young guys like when bats come up, age twenty five is their prime. It's more like 27, 28 is when they really start coming into their prime and really start becoming you know, better pitchers, you know, it's a chess match up there. It's not just, I got to swing the ball at a curving ball that moves really, really fast. I got to place it. I got to move it. I got to, you know, really master my craft. So we'll see what happens with Bubich. Maybe it just took him a couple of years. Plus the COVID year probably threw him off a little bit in his development. So let's see. I'm not really making a case. I'm not a truther, but right now he's playing good. Let's do, let's, let's see what he's got. So, you know, check out the boob. <laughs> he's a double yeah. D. <laughs> so uh guys that's about all for us for today please be sure to like subscribe comment rate and review check out our website if you already haven't we're going to try and get all these names posted on the website for you so you can go back if you you know uh, want to look at anybody that we talked about again just see uh you know what's going on you can do that there's info about us you get access to all of our episodes there matt and i are going to try and start writing a few columns for you guys on there so you can check those out Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. And uh, why don't you go check out our pals on Locked On Astros and make them your second listen each and every day. Astros have a lot of great fantasy-relevant players. They give very, very good takes. Those guys over there have been doing it for a long time. Once again, Locked On Astros, they're they're fantastic. I absolutely love what they do over there. And um, stay tuned for a new episode tomorrow. We are going to be doing a worryometer Wednesday. We're going to let you guys know uh, who we're worried about and, um, you know, who we're not so worried about. You know, guys that are off to a little bit of a rough start. But until then, guys, see you. Peace.